the investment decision, and the fundamentals of value. In this lecture, we introduce a number of fundamental concepts that underlie the valuation of assets and the investment decision. We'll be encountering these concepts throughout the course. The lecture is divided into the following topics. What is a valuable investment opportunity? Asset valuation. Present value. Net present value. The important concepts covered in this lecture include the opportunity cost of capital, the time value of money, the risk and return relationship, a model of the rate of return, present value, net present value. Some takeaways. Returns in the financial markets provide a standard against which all investment opportunities are judged. All investments are judged against their opportunity cost of capital in the financial market. The opportunity cost of capital is the return that is foregone on a comparable investment in the financial market when making the alternative investment. Riskier investments have higher opportunity costs of capital. The rate of return on a risky investment is equal to the risk-free rate plus a risk premium that compensates the investor for the risk of the investment. The value of an investment is the present value of its future cash flow stream. We have two decision rules to guide the investment decision, a net present value rule and a rate of return rule. What is a valuable investment opportunity? The primary goal of the firm is to maximize shareholders' wealth. The firm makes two basic financial decisions, the investment decision and the financing decision. And the outcome of these decisions impacts stock price and thereby impacts shareholders' wealth. Let's consider the firm's investment decision. The investment decision is the firm's answer to the question, what investment opportunities should the firm invest in? The firm needs to identify valuable investment opportunities. Well, what is a valuable investment opportunity? How would the firm recognize one? What is its salient characteristic? Well, suppose you were offered the opportunity to purchase a real estate property for $500,000, and you know that you can immediately sell it to another party for $600,000 you instantly recognize this as a valuable investment opportunity because a valuable investment opportunity is an investment worth more than it costs. The difference between what an investment is worth and what it costs is the investment's impact on wealth. By purchasing a property for $500,000 that's worth $600,000 you've increased your wealth by $100,000, the difference between the investment's value and its cost. So we can identify a valuable investment opportunity by its monetary impact on wealth. Alternatively, we can also identify a valuable investment opportunity by the rate of return it offers on our investment. So how do we know if the rate of return offered by an investment makes it a valuable investment opportunity. To answer that question, we introduce one of the most important concepts in finance, the opportunity cost of capital. 
The concept of the cost of capital is often misunderstood. The cost of capital is not the cost of the funds used to finance an investment. It's an opportunity cost of capital. It's the opportunity cost of investing the capital in an investment opportunity and foregoing the return on an alternative investment in the financial market. We'll use this graphic to explain this concept. The firm generates residual cash flow. This is the equity cash flow that belongs to the firm's shareholders. The firm can pay it out to shareholders as a cash dividend or retain it in the firm. Suppose it's paid out to shareholders as a cash dividend. Shareholders can have investment goals with investment horizons that extend over a number of years. So when they receive cash from their investments, they'll reinvest the cash in order to earn a return on these funds over their investment horizon. Shareholders have access to the financial markets and to the rates of return offered in the financial markets. So they'll reinvest the cash in financial assets and earn a return on the financial assets. Alternatively, the residual cash flow can be retained in the firm and managers can invest it for shareholders. But managers shouldn't invest that cash in financial assets. They're not paid to do for shareholders what shareholders can do on their own. Shareholders don't need managers to invest in financial assets for them. They have access to the financial markets and can do that on their own. Besides, managers have no particular expertise in investing in financial assets. But managers have knowledge of their firms and industries and experience in developing projects and in managing operations that produce goods and services at a profit. So their particular expertise is in identifying investment opportunities in real productive assets. So if managers invest cash on behalf of shareholders, they should invest in real assets and earn a return for shareholders on these real assets. Which would shareholders prefer? Would shareholders prefer to receive cash and invest on their own in financial assets? Or would they prefer managers to invest for them in real assets? Well, it depends. It depends on the return managers can earn on the investment in real assets. Shareholders will prefer managers to invest for them only if managers can do better than they can do on their own. That is, if managers can earn a rate of return better than that available on comparable investments in the financial markets. The implications that come out of this are these. The decision to invest or not invest in the investment opportunity depends on the return on the comparable investment in financial assets. The return on comparable financial assets provides the financial standard against which the alternative investment is evaluated. Only if the return on the investment beats the financial standard do you make the investment. The return on the financial asset is the opportunity cost of making the investment because the return on the financial asset is foregone if you make the alternative investment. This is what we mean by the investment's opportunity cost of capital. All investments are judged against their financial standard. All investments are judged against their opportunity cost of capital. The important points. Managers are hired to earn returns on investment better than the returns shareholders can earn on their own in the financial markets. The returns in the financial markets provides a financial standard against which all investment opportunities are judged. The return foregone on a comparable investment in the financial market represents an opportunity cost of making an alternative investment. 
all investments are evaluated against their opportunity cost of capital. What is a valuable investment opportunity? It's an investment worth more than it costs. And it's an investment with return greater than its opportunity cost of capital. These two statements are identical. An investment worth more than it costs has a return greater than its opportunity cost of capital. An investment with a return greater than its opportunity cost of capital is worth more than it costs. But these are two definitions by which we can identify valuable investment opportunities. Asset valuation. What is a valuable investment opportunity? An investment worth more than it costs. The analysis of an investment opportunity requires assessing the value of an investment asset. The investment asset can be a financial asset, such as a stock or bond, or a real asset, like plant, equipment, and inventory. Now, why does an asset have value? What do investment assets provide us that we value? An asset provides a return on investment in the form of future cash payments. These future cash payments comprise the asset's cash flow stream. What we value about an asset is its cash flow stream. And when we make an investment, we are essentially buying a cash flow stream. So when we assess the value of an asset, we assess the value of its cash flow stream. Asset valuation is the answer to the following question. What is the value today of a future cash flow stream? Let's rephrase that question using a key financial term. Asset valuation is the answer to the following question. What is the present value of a future cash flow stream? What determines the present value of a cash flow stream? Three features of a cash flow stream determine its value. The magnitude of the cash payments in the cash flow stream, the timing of the cash payments in the cash flow stream, and the risk of the cash payments in the cash flow stream. Magnitude, timing, and risk. These are the three components of value. The first component of value, the magnitude of the cash flow stream. Consider two cash flow streams. A and B. A pays $2, B pays $1. Make a rational choice between the two cash flow streams. A rational person would choose A, everything else equal, because more is preferred to less, and so more has a higher value than less. The second component of value the timing of the cash flow stream. Consider two cash flow streams, A and B. A pays a dollar this year, B pays a dollar next year. Make a rational choice between the two cash flow streams. A rational person would choose A, everything else equal. We prefer an immediate payoff to a delayed payoff. We prefer to have it today rather than tomorrow. So money has time value. And so a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. The third component of value, the risk of the cash flow stream. Consider two cash flow streams, A and B. 
A pays $100 for certain. It's guaranteed. B promises to pay $100, but there's a possibility it may pay as little as $60. Make a rational choice between the two cash flow streams. A rational person would choose A. We're risk averse. We prefer a sure thing to a gamble, everything else equal. And so a safe dollar is worth more than a risky dollar. From these components of value come two fundamental concepts. The time value of money and the risk and return relationship. These are important determinants of the market value of an investment asset and its rate of return. The time value of money. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Well, why is a dollar today worth more than a dollar tomorrow? Because today's dollar can be invested in the financial markets to start earning a rate of return immediately. So it's the opportunity to invest in the financial markets at a rate of return that give money its time value. We can picture the financial market as a place where present dollars are traded for future dollars and future dollars traded for present dollars. The time value of money is the rate of exchange between present dollars and future dollars established in the financial market. Let's suppose you have $100 today and you wish to have more next year. And let's assume that the market has established a 5% rate of return for one-year investments. You can take your current dollars to the financial market and buy a claim paying $105 next year and thus satisfy your time preference. Now suppose you own a claim paying $105 next year and you wish to have money today. You can take your claim to the financial market and sell it for $100. The 5% return in the financial market establishes your claim's present value. So the important point. The time value of money is established by the trade-off of current dollars and future dollars in the financial market. And the time value of money is reflected in the rates of return available to all investors in the financial markets. The risk and return relationship. Safe dollars are more valuable than risky dollars. Risk averse investors prefer safe investments. So there's a problem. How do you induce risk averse investors to take on a risky investment? Well, you have to bribe them. Risky investments must promise higher returns to induce investors to undertake them. To produce a higher return, a risky cash flow stream will sell at lower prices. And in the financial markets, investments are priced so that the higher the risk, the higher the expected return. And this is the risk and return relationship. Some implications of the risk and return relationship. A risky investment's rate of return reflects a risk premium that rewards investors for taking on the investment's risk. And the greater the risk, the bigger must be the risk premium reflected in the rate of return. An investment's opportunity cost of capital is the return foregone on an investment in the financial market of comparable risk. And this is what we mean by comparable investments. They are investments of comparable risk. And riskier investments have higher opportunity costs of capital. The time value of money and the risk and return relationship are reflected in the returns on investments in the financial markets. We can value an investment's rate of return 
as consisting of the time value of money and a risk premium, the additional return needed to compensate investors for the risk of the investment. The time value of money is a rate of return without risk. So let's call it the risk-free rate. So the model says that the return on a risky asset is equal to the risk-free rate, the return on a risk-free asset, plus a risk premium. That's a return in addition to the risk-free rate that results from the risk and return relationship in the financial market. This is the basic model for the rate of return on a risky investment. It's also called the market required rate of return. It's the return required by the market for a given level of risk. The returns in a financial market provide the financial standard used to assess and value risky investments. This model can be used to estimate an investment's opportunity cost of capital. To value an investment asset, we forecast the magnitude and timing of the cash flow stream over the asset's economic life and assess the risk of the cash flow stream and then value the cash flow stream given its magnitude, timing and risk at its opportunity cost of capital, the market required rate of return given the investment's level of risk. Present value The value of an asset is the value of its cash flow stream. So to value an asset, we forecast a magnitude and timing of the cash flow stream over the life of the asset and assess the risk of the cash flow stream. Now no cash flow stream is unique. It can always be duplicated in a well-developed financial market by making the right investment today. As all investors have access to the financial markets, the cash flow stream's value is determined by the amount of money needed today to recreate its magnitude, timing, and risk in the financial market at its opportunity cost of capital. Let's demonstrate this with the following example. You're offered an investment that promises to pay $1,000 at the end of one year. Investments of comparable risk in the financial market are priced to yield an expected return of 8.5%. As an alternative to the investment, you can go to the financial market and for $921.66 you can buy a financial security today, yielding 8.5% that promises to pay $1,000 at the end of one year. So what's the maximum price you're willing to pay for the offered investment? $921.66 You can duplicate the investment in the financial market for $921.66. Therefore, you wouldn't be willing to pay more than $921.66 for the investment. It's worth $921.66. So the alternative in the financial market determined the value of the investment. A cash flow stream's value is determined by the amount of money needed today to recreate its magnitude, timing, and risk in the financial market at the opportunity cost of capital. And what is the 8.5% return available in the financial market? It's the investment's opportunity cost of capital. It's the return in the financial market that you forego if you make the alternative investment. What is the present value of $1,000 paid next year? 
given the opportunity to invest in the financial markets at an expected return of 8.5%. $921.66. Because the present value of a future sum is the money needed today to recreate it in the financial market at its opportunity cost of capital. Let's consider how that present value created that future sum. This is the value invested today at 8.5%. This is one year interest at 8.5% on the value invested today. The value invested plus a one year return on the investment is the value next year. On the left hand side $921.66 is common so it can be factored out to give us this expression. Now let's generalize the equation. And we have present value times 1 plus the rate of return is equal to the future value. Let's solve this equation for present value by dividing both sides by 1 plus the rate of return. And we get that present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus the rate of return. And this is the equation for the present value over a single period, where the cash flow stream consists of a single payment made at the end of the period. It says that the present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus the rate of return, where the rate of return is the opportunity cost of capital. It's also the market required rate of return for a given level of risk. Present value is the amount of money needed today to create a future cash flow stream. The value of an investment asset is the money needed today to recreate its future cash flow stream in the financial market at its opportunity cost of capital. And therefore, the value of an investment asset is the present value of its future cash flow stream. And this is the important concluding point. Let's return to our example. What is the value of an investment that promises to pay $1,000 at the end of one year? Investments of comparable risk in the financial markets have an expected return of 8.5%. The value of an investment is the present value of its cash flow stream. This investment has a single period cash flow stream. Its single payment occurs at the end of one year. So its present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus the opportunity cost of capital. The future value is $1,000 at the end of one year. The opportunity cost of capital is 8.5%. So present value is equal to $1,000 divided by 1.085. The investment's present value is $921.66. The value of an investment is equal to the present value of this cash flow stream. So this investment has a value of $921.66. Net present value. When making an investment decision, we ask, how much is the asset worth and how much does it cost? Let's restate the question using financial terms. What is the value of the asset's future cash flow stream today, and how much does it cost? What's its present value, and how much does it cost? What's its present value, 
net of cost? What's its net present value? Valuable investment opportunities are worth more than they cost. Net present value identifies valuable investment opportunities. It values an investment as the present value of its cash flow stream and compares its value to its cost. If net present value is greater than zero, the investment is worth more than it costs, and if accepted, it would increase our wealth. If net present value is less than zero, the investment costs more than it's worth, and if accepted, it would subtract from our wealth. If net present value equals zero, the investment costs as much as it's worth. It's fairly priced, and it would have no impact on wealth. Investments impact wealth only when they're mispriced relative to their true value. The difference between an investment's value and its cost is its impact on wealth. And so net present value is the absolute dollar change in wealth from the acceptance of an investment opportunity. It can be positive, negative, or zero. Businesses search for investment opportunities and projects with positive net present values. These are investments priced below their true value. And firms increase wealth by accepting positive net present value projects. What is a valuable investment opportunity? We have two definitions of a valuable investment opportunity. But we now have a more precise statement of the first definition. What is a valuable investment opportunity? An investment with a net present value greater than zero. It's also an investment with a return greater than its opportunity cost of capital. These definitions of a valuable investment opportunity provide the basis for formulating decision rules to guide our investment decisions. We have two investment decision rules, a net present value rule and a rate of return rule. The net present value rule states, accept all investments with net present values greater than zero. The rate of return rule states, accept all investments with rates of return greater than their opportunity costs of capital. Let's look at an example using the net present value rule. Suppose we can purchase real estate property today for $500,000 and we could sell it after one year for $600,000. The appropriate opportunity cost of capital is 12%. Do we accept the investment opportunity? The investment opportunity costs $500,000 in year zero. Its cash flow stream consists of $600,000 received in year one from the sale of the property. It's a single period cash flow stream. So its present value is equal to its future value divided by one plus the opportunity cost of capital. 600,000 divided by 1.12 gives us a present value of 535,000 $714. The investment has a value of $535,714. To decide whether to accept or reject the investment, we use a net present value rule, and so we calculate net present value. We take the present value of the investment and subtract its cost and get net present value. The net present value rule is to accept the project if its net present value is greater than zero. The net present value is greater than zero, so we accept the project. 
did we make the correct decision? The investment will increase our wealth by $35,714. As our objective is to increase our wealth, we made the correct decision. Let's also evaluate this investment using the rate of return rule. The rate of return rule is to accept all investments with rates of return greater than their opportunity cost of capital. The investment's opportunity cost of capital is 12% and we calculate a rate of return for the investment where the rate of return is the dollar return on the investment divided by the cost of the investment. The property was sold for $600,000 and purchased for $500,000. The difference is our dollar return. We divide the dollar return by the cost of the investment. The rate of return on the investment is 20%. We compare the investment's rate of return to its opportunity cost of capital. The rate of return on the investment is greater than its opportunity cost of capital. So according to the rate of return rule, this project should be accepted. Let's end this lecture with the following problem. You're considering an investment opportunity that costs $100,000 and promises the return 10%. A comparable investment in the financial market returns 15%. A bank offers to lend you $100,000 at 8% with no conditions. Do you invest $100,000 in the investment opportunity. Put the video on pause and think about your answer. When you have your answer, come back. If your answer is that the investment should be accepted because the investment's 10% return is greater than the 8% cost of capital from the bank loan, you're incorrect. What is the investment's cost of capital? The cost of capital is not the cost of raising the money to finance the investment. That's a financing decision, not an investment decision. The cost of capital is the return on the comparable investment in the financial market. Where would you invest the $100,000? In the investment opportunity earning 10%? or in the comparable financial market investment earning 15%. Obviously, you would invest $100,000 at the higher 15% in the financial market. That return in the financial market provided the financial standard against which the investment opportunity is evaluated. The financing of the $100,000 by the bank loan was irrelevant to the investment decision. Consider why it's irrelevant. Recall the separation principle, which says that the investment decision and the financing decision are separate and independent decisions. You first make the investment decision. After you make the investment decision, then you make the financing decision.